So this, uh, still got the date on, from the 7th of December. This is uh, part two of R6. Uh, so we uh, obviously remember part one well, uh, but we continue our adventure through classes, not oriented programming. Uh, uh, so in this second half of the chapter, we started off with controlling access. And so what this was all about was this idea that um, as a kind of specific feature of R6, you could define things that could be private, um, which would mean that you could only access them within the class. So you could have, you know, the other kind of methods and stuff could use them. Um, but you couldn't use them when you're outside the class. So it, uh, in terms of how it actually works and how you write them and stuff like that, it's all pretty similar um, to the to the way of defining kind of public arguments. Um, but but uh, you use the private dollar sign instead of self dollar sign uh, when you use them. So I've got an example here. Okay. So this is uh, a kind of, I think, uh, a kind of an expansion of an example that we had in the first half of R6, um, which is like this kind of, you know, a, 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 an object kind of of a person um, where you've got this kind of class around people um, where you get stuff like their name and their location. Um, but what we're doing here is we're creating it privately and then it can be printed here but it's but it's private so you can't then access it when you're out of the class which i think i i think i've then got a dem demo of that on the next page yes okay so so here so initializers you have you confirm that name and location of these things you've got a list of your private stuff down here um and then you you're clarifying you've got this kind of uh, what to do with your print function um, and it will do this stuff, which includes your private uh, variables. So uh, you can't call those private variables from outside the class. So here I've created a new person, who's Megan in London. And then if I call Megan, then it will give me this printed out uh, info about me. Um, but if I want to access the same information, which is like the name, because that's set privately, it doesn't, it won't return anything or return null. Okay, cool. I understand that now. Um, okay, so why would you use this? Um, so a major thing is that it gives you control over what people can access, um, which I think is, makes it kind of one of the things that makes it more kind of stringent than other classes. Um, because you have that ability to be more opinionated about what people should and shouldn't be able to be using. Um, that also has this perk, which means that if you're doing something, if you're kind of creating this class that lots of other people can use and uh, they might be using it for a bunch of things, it gives you more control over how you can change it in future because you can be assured that nobody's going to be using these fields that you've created that they weren't really supposed to be using, but otherwise they might have found them and thought they were useful and had other uses for them that you didn't foresee, possibly. Um, there is a side note here, which is that in other languages, this can be more important than an R, um, perhaps when object hierarchies are more complicated. Um, I don't know many other languages, so I have no further comment on that, but that is apparently the case. Okay, so we also have active fields, which are, they look like fields, um, but they are defined with functions specifically. And each active binding is a function that takes the argument value. Okay, right, let me just, let me just read this several times. Each active binding is a function that takes the argument value. If it's missing, the value has been retrieved Otherwise, it's been modified. Okay, so when it's missing, it's the 
first time and otherwise it would be, be modified. Let's see if my example makes that clearer. Okay, active field random returns a different value every time we access it. Oh, okay, so, so because it's a function, it can do, you know, different things as well. So random equals here, function, and then you've got value there, which is your argument that you can have. Uh, and then if it's missing value, it does this, else it does this, and it would always be missing. Oh, so it gives you the, right, I remember this. So it gives you the ability to, uh, it's kind of like, it kind of helps you to error stuff better and to identify when things are going wrong or maybe are being done in a way they shouldn't be done. This, uh, as well as giving this option to use this function. So here you would have, uh, you'd call random and then it would, do this. Yes. Okay. X and then X random. Okay. So that can therefore, yes, this is that's what I just said. It means that you can get these additional checks in conjunction with private fields, in conjunction with private fields. Okay, right. So how's that working in conjunction with private fields? Um, so uh, we've got this name function, which is active. If missing value, then you get this name, which is we're holding privately, or else you say if it's not, if the name isn't a, a character and there's not just one name, then it becomes value. So what does that look like? Okay, so then what that looks like is I've done this person again. I can get the name and I can get the name because it's yeah it's not private the name is not private the dot name is private but it's getting the it's getting the dot name from the private list um but if I try and set the name to something that's not a character it doesn't work and if I try and set it to multiple names then it also doesn't work so it's kind of interplaying there with the private field and the active field to give you another level of safety. Okay, then we have several exercises. Do I have, I've, I've got them in, okay, I've got them in R rather than here. Okay, so. Um, we have four exercises. The fourth one, I ran out of time for this. You could say, I didn't run out of time for this because then we had another month, but um, I forgot that I hadn't done that. Uh, but still, we've done three of them. I think I did the other ones as well. I think I just kind of like lost the will here. Um, so uh, we've got the kind of how similar are these things? We've got create a bank account class, which prevents you from directly setting the account balance, but you can still withdraw from a deposit too. Okay, so this is a bit like we had a similar exercise in the last one, which was more to do with like you can withdraw and it also charges you extra money if you. Uh, if you go into your overdraft and things like that, whereas this is more to do with you can't overwrite or, or set the account balance. You have to kind of start from zero, I think. Okay, let's start with that then. Let's see how that goes. Um, I mean, feel free to, is this right? Yeah, okay, it's probably not Shakespeare plays. Um, okay, right. So we've got a bank account such a blast of past. Um, you've got this public stuff. So you've got your deposit, which you want public because you want people to be able to set it. But then privately, we've got the balance because we don't want to be able to change the balance uh, themselves. So then you've got your balance plus your deposit. Um, you've also got withdrawal, which is kind of similar, but it also has a kind of error if your withdrawal is if your balance take away the draw is smaller than zero. Um, so your balance is, your balance take away the draw rule. Yeah. And then, so I guess when it starts up, your balance has to be zero. I think that's, I think that's the implication. So let's, let's try it out. Okay, yeah, I should just got rid of that stuff. It's not useful. I should have moved this stuff around. Okay, uh, so we've got R6, and then we've got this. 
Do, 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 do. Bank account. And then balance is a private field, so withdrawal deposit of access to that. So Christmas account. Um, this was relevant a while ago. Uh, so we've got this account, which, uh, but I can I not see my balance? Is that also true? So, because this is private. Yeah, so I can't see it. So I just have to know so it. Would we, make, would we make then like a an active field for that one, similar how we did with name? Yeah, 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 that sounds sensible. Without editing it? Yeah, so. If private balance, so they had, oh God. Because then we had active. Yes, okay, so we had like, so private equals list, and then we had like, that dot. Sorry, this is probably not very thrilling or professional. Uh, put all those dots in. I appreciate this is not how you need to do it, but I think it'll make it easier for me to process it if I'm doing it in exactly the same way. Um, and then, uh, so that's the list, got that in. So do I need to have that first then? Well, I don't think so, because, um, and so then we have something that looks like this. Is it just, do they all need to be active or is it just that active is list? Mm. I guess the point of the active is if you ever want to even like look at something that's private, you need a function that's going to be able to be inside the object because the private things can only be worked with inside the object. Yep. This is the logic there. Oh my gosh. Okay, well that gives you the functions. And if, but then we also want a function that's just, we just want one that's just, Uh, and we just want it to be, can I get this? Is this going to be close to that? If missing value private dot balance else, and this is just checking stuff. Stop if not is is numeric and length is one. It probably should just be one. Mm, I'll take that out. Keep it simple. Okay. Let's try that again. Could have broken it. It ran. Christmas account. Balance. Ooh. Oh. Missing can only be used for arguments. That's a shame. Um, oh, it's because I haven't put value in here. Okay. I don't know where. Okay. Yay. We've got, a, we've got a balance of zero. Well, let's see if that good luck holds when we withdraw five. Oh, wait. So we shouldn't be able to withdraw five. Oh, wait, I mean, I don't know if that's the error that I wanted. Let's try the positive 50. Oh, damn it. Okay, so I probably shouldn't have made these ones. These ones should probably have all remained public. So what if I change that? Can you have public and active? Is there a reason why you couldn't? I guess all those active ones should have had value if uh, if they were active. Oh, that doesn't like that. Okay. Uh, why doesn't it like that? Are we? Do we? Is this in the wrong place? 
Oh no, that's a list. Oh, I know. Because then that's a list. Oh, that looks okay. Yes. And then we deposit 50. And that's 50. I mean, I think that's frankly incredible that that's got working. Uh, cool. Um, okay. So then the next one, let's see if this is going to be interesting enough to do as well. We had create a class with a write only password field. It should have check password method that returns true or false. Oh, yeah, I remember this one. That returns true or false, um, but there should be no way to view the complete password. So you kind of want to uh, you create a password and then you can check it just to confirm that it exists or no to check whether it is a given password. So you want to be like, is my password password? And it's like, no. OK. So let's see what we've got here. Also, if anybody has also done these exercises and would like to go through any of them, go through their working, then I'm very open to that as well. Um, but I'm going to keep barreling on with this a little bit. Uh, so write only password. Yeah, so we've done that. So we've got password. I've got this list. Uh, it will stop you from printing the password. Um, then you can set your password and it's private here. You can check the password and it just tells you if it's identical or not. Um, so let's see if that works. So you've got your new password. Oh, so you need to create your new password class and then you set your password. Well, we've got open sesame in caps at the end. Uh, and then if I do new password, it tells me it's a secret, obviously. So it's not because I think if I don't do this, then it will print it, I think, which is not great. Totally great. Um, and then if I check password and I check it, but I've got my caps wrong, it says it's false. And if I do that, it says it's true. Okay, so that worked. What happens if we do just delete the print method? What'll it show Let's us? have a look. I so. think it's printing. I just realized I did this uh, without a print method and I checked it's printing a password. <laughs> password in oh yeah. Okay, let's uh, demo that. So can I just get rid of that? Okay, let's get rid of that for now. New password new. Da, da, da. Oh yeah, it gives you all this deets on it. I guess it's a standard print of when you pass that kind of class. So yes. So got that little extra bit. Got to check your prints. Uh, Extend the rando class. So the rando class was the one which gave you like a new random number each time you ran it. Um, so uh, at this time you want to be able to access the previous random man and not just your the random man it's just given you. Um, so now we've got last random so then we've got this active uh binding we've got random which is what we had originally yes yeah, so a random is the thing to get your random number run so that your that sets that as your last random then so that it was kind of retained in that in this private one uh And then it will, previous is a function that returns the last random and it's private. So otherwise, oh, so then it here it prints it. So then that's what, that's where you get to see. So it prints the last random, which is the current random. It's a bit confusing, not sure that's worded very clearly. Um, uh, and then if you call last random rather than random, then it will, won't rerun this. It will just give you the existing last random. Okay. So for EG, 
Rando new. Then we've got random. We've got another random. And then we've got previous rather than a new random. Yeah, is that what it wants? I guess it is what it wants because it's printed it twice rather than printing a new one and otherwise it would just print a new one. So yeah, okay. I'm somewhat believable. Uh, and I guess you only want to go back one, so you could have it so that you could keep saving them, but that's not what we're doing here. Okay, did anyone do this, where you perform an experiment to find out whether subclasses access private fields or methods from their parent, or whether they could? Because I did not do that. Um, and I don't think I've got any particular views on it either at this stage. Uh, so ooh, it seems really weird. Okay. Um, okay. Well, we'll leave that. Maybe we'll ask in the Slack and see if any previous cohorts have any views on it that they can share with us at this stage. Because, um, yeah, I'm not sure about that. Okay, then the next section was on reference semantics. Okay, ah, oh, that is my reaction. So I'm glad I captured that. Um, okay, so, oh God, objects are not copied when they're modified, which is, which is, different to what we expect in most R stuff. So that could be complicated. Uh, so we've told this here because, how have I done? I mean, I think this was just directly taken from the book, but so Y2 is Y1, right? So yes, yeah, so here Y2 is Y1 and then Y1 changes, but then Y1 and Y2 are still the same. So they are in fact the same object, just with two names. So if you so want to copy, sorry. Yeah. So are we just like, when we assign with these things, we're just adding a new pointer is essentially what we're getting when we do Yes, if that? it doesn't exist already. Yeah. Then yes, you're, and I guess, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Um, so if you, you can't explicitly, use this clone function uh, to clone the object. So then, yeah, here you've got your y2 remains zero, which is what you would expect it to uh, if you if they were copied rather than um, not copied. Okay. So reasoning. The reasoning, the reasoning for this, or the reasoning, the explanation, okay, well, let's just read it. Okay, so the reference semantics make makes it hard to reason, oh, reasoning, okay, because you're reasoning about the code. So reference semantics is the term for this, the fact that it's not copied and modified, and that makes it hard to reason about code. So because if you had the vast majority of functions, you would know the final line, this line here of this, only modifies Z, yeah, because, yeah. Uh, but the final line is much harder to reason about. If the function calls methods of X or Y, it might modify them as well as Z. So that is confusing or could be confusing. And that is the biggest potential downside of R6, apparently. So you can avoid that by writing functions that return a value or modify their R6 inputs, but not both. Although I think there was something in the book about how, unless you do want to do that, in which case uh, it's something which we go, they're gonna, I think at the end of this kind of section, they're doing a bit on like, um, uh, like balancing competing bad things or something. <laughs> I'm not quite sure. I don't think it's called that, but it's like, you know, it's like this idea of like, sometimes you have to make decisions. And so here, are, here's everything to know to make these decisions. So I think that's going to come up again later. Finalizer. Okay, it sounds intense. Our six objects are only deleted once, which when they are finalized, as opposed to 
when they initialized, which is what happens at the start. So then it kind of cleans up any of those resources created at the start. And so it will be run when it's deleted, the object, or when R exits. So yeah, that will run. Uh, you can have a split, you can specifically um, explicitly indicate what should happen at that those times. So you can hear there's this thing around like for, so a whole bunch of uh, little classes being made during this, but this one is to do with uh, creating a temporary file. And so you can uh, kind of clean that up um, in this, uh, in this, when you delete this class, it will run finalize, or not delete, delete an object that's from that class or close R. Okay, well, yeah, hang on, straightforward. Um, if you use an R6 class as a default value of a field, it'll be shared across all instances of the object. Ah, so therefore you put it in initialize if you want it to be called fresh each time. Okay, so yes. Because what's happening here is, oh, I don't think I put in the first example where it doesn't happen. That's helpful, isn't it? Um, I think I was trying to save space for some reason. It's not like space is finite in these PowerPoints, but anyway. Um, so in the other example, which I could probably get up, um, so here DBA and DBB aren't the same, which is because we've uh, run it anew uh, in the initialize function, um, where we've got this temporary file, which is the one that we just had here, and we've kind of run it again here um in the initial in the initialize when this is created whereas if you don't have that and you kind of feed it in as a function uh, argument then you would instead have they wouldn't it wouldn't rerun the uh r6 class that you're calling it would just kind of give you what it had when it ran when you first um you know first used it um because it shares it very friendly so, uh, so yeah, to avoid that, that's why you're putting stuff in initialize um, to making sure it's getting called every time this is initialized and you create a new class object like that. Okay, then we have one exercise, one exercise, oh, that's different. Okay, sorry, just checking what we have. Uh, one exercise here, which is to create a class, which allows you to write a line to a specified file and you open the connection to the file and initialize your append line using cat in append line and close the connection in finalize. Okay, I think this kind of used a lot of the stuff that they already had. Um, so I think I did do this one. Um, okay, so we've got this class called file writer. Uh, we initialize it and get this file uh file name uh when we finalize it we close that connection and we also have our append line function uh where you add stuff okay sure believable okay so we've got a temp file we've uh gonna write to that file Hmm, I didn't start with this. Let's start with that. Okay, <laughs> write the file. Uh, I'm gonna read them. Okay, it's empty. Then I'm gonna write to file while appending this line. Okay, sure, is that believable? It's kind of believable. Um, do I have the actual file here? Would it save here? Or would it save somewhere completely different? Or was it just oh, in here? It's going to be in some random temp location. Oh, yeah, that looks yeah, rubbish. No. Okay, cool. Well, I think I've, I've proved my point, I think. So <laughs> it's reading something, isn't it? So it's good. What happens, what happens when you delete the, like, if you explicitly delete the um, write to file object? If you oh, like uh, rm write to file, will it, will it show? And then will it say something? <laughs> as in this bit, as in the class bit, okay. Yeah, you remove the object, like, because we made a finalize. Oh, yeah. But it didn't say anything. We could have, like, 
print. Uh, bye. Although we also know, don't we also know that removing stuff doesn't immediately delete it? Or is it? Is this well, kind of garbage collector thing that we read the chapter and we're like, ah, never mind. Let's skip what that means. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or is it? So temp file. Yeah, so that's just the temp file. It's not like that, sir. Hmm. Hmm. Because then that wouldn't be relevant. That wouldn't be relevant unless. Hmm. Okay, that's interesting. That's an interesting point. If there was something with unlink. Could it be that we have to do that? Oh, yeah. Uh, unlink. My own message is what I need rather than print. But then it's also uh, remove and it's giving the message. Yes. Okay. I also need to close it, I don't know. Great. Oops. Or do I no? Because it's not like you would do it doesn't exist anymore. Does it? Right file. Well, it's not like you would do that, no. Hmm. When it is deleted or when R exits. When the initializer's deleted? Well, not when the initializer. When the what about when I mean it's not gonna be that, because that's not the point of it. I mean it looks like it would work this way when you're reading the example in the book. Oh. That like it should be when you remove the instance of the the class uh, file writer. That's really weird. I don't know what's happening. Yeah. File writer new temp file. Always no write to file and then it's write to file is that yeah 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 okay well I think that should work so. <laughs> So that's annoying. Okay. I wonder if it's maybe another one of those examples where now that oh. makes sense because because we're, we're in our studio and our studio is storing those like but no that doesn't make sense either because we're removing it. I wonder if I can sure. do this and check if that works. Do I actually on that edit point now. Okay. Uh, temporary file, blah, blah, blah. And then we just want something. Oh, do, do I have that? on you. Does that give it actually anything to do? Okay, what if I delete that? Well, I didn't do anything. So maybe it is a, well, I don't, oh, I don't really see what it would be, but. Okay. 
Okay. Yeah, I'm it like, must be those R Studio things. Let me uh, try. It. Oh. Oh. I just got this when I opened an R markdown. It's from. It's obviously removed it in some way because now I've got oh god I don't want to do this now because now it's given me all this info so maybe it's that remove this is not removing it in the way that garbage collector thing what was the uh, this was what yeah. I'm feeling it's garbage collector stuff yeah yeah, yeah where it was like um oh, actually, you remove something, but that doesn't delete it. It kind of only gets deleted in the future when garbage collection happens, that, but that happens fairly regularly. So I, was, I still would have thought that would have led to that happening, but maybe the garbage collector got triggered by me trying to open a new file. Okay, we can ask people that as well or we can I might explore it a bit um after this um okay well let's okay where am I now here yeah, okay that one it's done kind of done well it worked it just uh I guess I don't know where the connection closed but yeah okay the zoom thing please go away okay if you call explicitly to garbage collector, it'll work. I just tested. So if you call the GC, it'll it'll flush it out immediately. Okay, right, let's go. What if I just do this one? I mean. Oh, you remove it and then you call GC, which is the like, Force oh, you remember, and then you call GC. I see. Yeah, and then garbage collection, and then it should go bye. Blah, blah, blah. Wait, does GC have a? Is it a function like that? A function, but no input. Oh, it says clean up, which is what this was supposed to say. Cool. That's funny. Thank you. That's good. Okay, so this I think I just copied pretty much from the book. So when it says I, actually it's not I, it's Happy Wickham. Uh, but it's very similar to uh, reference classes. Um, and these are some reasons why R6 could be considered better. Uh, it uses, it's built on top of environments. R6 uses S3, which is simpler than S4 get hyped for S4 next time. Um, <laughs> so it's kind of simple to understand. It's got very comprehensive online documentation, which is good. Um, it has a simpler mechanism for cross package subclassing, which just works without you having to think about it. Good to know. Uh, it, RC, the bad one, mingles variables and builds in the same stack of environments, so you get field and set field equals equals value fields like regular values whereas you get them in a separate environment which is more verbose but it's more explicit which I mean it makes sense that Hadley would like that given that is tidyverse stuff uh, much faster than RC often not important but RC is slow uh, so here it gives an example of it um, improving the performance a lot in Shiny, which is good. Um, RC is tied to R, so it's difficult for packages, need to work across many R versions. And because the ideas are similar, if you do need to learn RC, I mean, I feel like some of this is contradictory, like, oh, it's really easy once you know R6, but also it's a lot harder to learn RC, so I wouldn't bother with that. Um, but I'm happy enough with it because I do, despite having 
given the impression of being unprepared, despite the fact that I did prepare just several weeks ago, um, I do feel like R6 is, I, I feel like I vibe with it a bit. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, I still find it easier than the S3 idea. And mm -hmm. I, I'm sort of coming around slowly to the idea that he started with when he talked about S3. And I guess what we'll talk about next week with S4, that the advantage of learning it is that you're thinking about object oriented in a method functional way mm -hmm. instead of an objecty way, which is more, I think, intuitive to how, I mean, R is like totally functional for the most part. Mm -hmm. Like it's almost all functions, which is, I don't know. I'm, I'm starting to not hate it as much. I'm accepting that it'll be different and that it'll be okay. And I'm getting around to it, but we'll see. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, that is what I have on R6. So uh, I think next we need we have S4. I'm guessing. Uh, I should check, but I feel. Did, awesome. did Did any of us volunteer for S4 next week? I think I volunteered at some point. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. <laughs> yeah, I can do it next week. It's fine. <laughs> um, so I was, well, basically, I don't really have a solution to this, but it, it does feel like we are going to end up doing it fairly often if it does end up kind of being three of us. So I was wondering, I quite, I think there's something good to the momentum of having one a week, but I might, if it if it does just end up being three of us forever, then it might be preferable to do them every fortnight so that it doesn't mean that we have to do them like sometimes twice a month for the prep stuff, which feels like that might bring me to the stage where I struggle. Mm. That's why I was thinking like what you guys thought about just doing half a chapter, because I think that is slightly more easy to manage prepping half a chapter rather than a full chapter, but I don't know how you guys feel about it. Yeah, I don't mind doing half a chapter. I I haven't really looked at ahead at all. So I think anyway, like some of them, like this one, obviously we halved because it felt like it was a bit an S3 uh, because it felt like it was a bit much anyway. Um, I'd like people to come back really but I don't know how we achieve that in fact I think it's probably quite hard to achieve given that we are now quite far in front of where most people would be if they just wanted to pick up but then maybe some people might not mind because it is just like just this section could be interesting but I don't know I suspect it's not going to be a much bigger group than this ever <laughs> We had um, a fourth today. <laughs> yeah, we had a fourth person for a few minutes. We that did. Was I was more. It was like it was quite. It was like ten minutes or something. Yeah. <laughs> it was. It, I thought maybe it was like a mistake, but then they did stick around. So. <laughs> yeah. Um, I like I like the weekly things too because it builds momentum. But let's see how we feel. Yeah, I would also prefer to stick first to the weekly and see how it goes. Yeah. If we find um because otherwise uh, or maybe yeah. we would do maybe we could do something like we each do one and then we have a week and then we each do one and then we have a week or something so it's a bit more it's still like every week apart from the fourth one um or something but i'm not yeah like i yeah i i think i do agree that i think every two weeks makes it feel too slow um mm. yeah i could just see myself i can see myself basically being at the point where it's like still January and I have to do one being like this yeah. is annoying <laughs> yeah um but that is not my concern for next week so don't worry about it <laughs> <laughs> okay so then I will um prepare again like half of the S4 chapter yeah how long is this for I feel like when I looked at it like a month or two months ago I was like oh it makes sense to split this one yes. too yeah um but look. I'm that's Oh yeah. It's oh yeah, really yeah. Long. That's that's a small scroll bar. Yeah. 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 Oof. Yeah. Maybe five two and five yeah. three. 
Yeah. And then, and then I can do you five, four, five, five, and then five, six is like, is like one it's thing. The, so, yeah, five, yeah. six maybe is like a shortish kind of like, could just be like, a, to discuss, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I don't know what it is. So. Yeah. so maybe next week we'll do five, two and five, yep. three. Yeah. Sorry, 15.2 and 15.3. Yeah. <laughs> another number <laughs> oh chapter 16 is called trade-offs that's the one that i was thinking when i was trying yeah. to describe the idea of having something bad and something else that was bad the trade-off that's what I meant. <laughs> yeah trade-offs why don't we do i don't know if we need to do a whole conversation on that we could just like ah, yeah because... hunk trade-offs at the end of um the end of s4 as well okay because it's pretty short yeah it's not too long that one and then we get to metaprogramming which i have to be honest also looks like it's going to be really chunky mm -hmm. so expressions and quasi quotations oh my god very complicated to me but i'm a slow simple person so <laughs> okay cool yeah <laughs> It's also getting into the realms of the kind of stuff that you just see people like posting and frustration about on the advanced yeah. group anyway, <laughs> where people are like, oh my God, this stuff. And I'm like, we, are, we aren't even there yet. So, <laughs> all right, cool. Well, nice one. Glad we managed to get together after Christmas. Uh, yeah. And I'll see you next week. Thank you. Yeah. Bye. Bye, guys. Bye. Stay safe. Stay sane. <laughs> you too. Yeah. <laughs>